Hello and welcome to Business Reporter. I'm Alistair Greener and today we're going to be talking about business energy consumption. And joining me is Mark Borrett from Reactive Technologies. Good morning. Good morning, Alistair. So we're all under increasing pressure to increase our energy efficiency. How does this manifest itself in the business context? It manifests itself really from a cost perspective. Um, the more you consume and the higher your energy cost, then you know ultimately you are paying for that um, in reduced profit margins. Um, and the bigger the business, the more acutely those businesses feel it. Um, quite often, there's a feeling of helplessness. Um, these are all external factors being brought on businesses, um, driven by government regulation, defining that there's a certain amount of renewable generation has to be um, created and the energy industry has to then respond and it's the energy consumer at the end of the day that's left picking up the tab for all of that. Um, but I think energy efficiency is an interesting way of coping with it as we look forward to the future things like flexibility are going to be becoming increasingly important. So is being energy efficient, is that the critical thing for companies? It is a critical thing, definitely. Um, reducing the amount of energy you consume will obviously help reduce the amount of energy that you actually pay for. But um, actually, it's quite inward looking. It's looking at just your own operations. And increasingly in the future, you're going to have to be part of the energy environment. Um, so initiatives like demand side management, or as it's known as DSM, um, are really opening up the ability for large-scale corporate users of energy to actually participate and be an active member of the energy industry, um, whereby those organisations are actually paid to support the industry, to help physically maintain the balance of supply and demand of, of electricity. And that can open up new revenue streams for large organisations. It can also open up cost savings. And when you combine those two activities, activities together, it starts to become highly attractive in comparison to just doing energy efficiency. So can companies take control of the situation by themselves? They can. Um, typically, within a large organisation, you'll have an energy manager. Um, and that individual's role is to manage the energy but typically they manage it in just two dimensions so they manage the first dimension is price how much do I pay for my energy for my energy supplier the second one is volume how much do I actually consume which is back to the energy efficiency point so that's typically how energy has been managed within an organization but as we are seeing these macroeconomic factors starting to play more of a part in the day-to-day -day operation of the energy industry so there's going to have to be a need for more sophistication more controls and that's really the third and fourth dimension that they have to look at the third being time when am I actually using my energy because there are some times of the day when the energy price might be very high others when it might be low or even negative so Choosing when you can consume energy is going to start to reap rewards for large businesses. And the fourth dimension is doing it in a way that doesn't really impact the operations, the, purpose, the purposes of why you've bought energy in the first place. So we are advocating going from a two-dimensional way of managing your energy in a large corporation to four dimensions, managing it now by time, which is really being flexible when you consume it, and making sure you don't actually impact the operations of your business. So can you be a little bit more specific and tell us how this actually works in practice? Yes, um, a good example would be a large um, organisation that had multiple office buildings dotted around the UK. Large office buildings with many floors, lots of people working in them. Those offices have to be kept at a good temperature, good working temperature, so they will typically have air conditioning systems within those office buildings. What is also there are controls to regulate the temperature in those buildings, to work out when they should come on, when they should go off, and what temperature they should maintain. What we can actually do is, is interface to those controls. We have a software platform. We can talk directly to those controls. We can see how that building operates. We can see how well it retains energy or heat 
and how quickly it loses that heat or that energy. And within that, we can work out how much or little energy we can actually start to play with. And by taking an amount of energy from one office building, adding it to another office building's energy, and so on and so forth, we aggregate up a large amount of energy that we can then start to use to optimize the cost of for that customer. So we can choose to avoid consuming energy at one time period if the price of energy is very high. Equally, we can actually increase the consumption, again within agreed parameters that the customer is happy with, at a point when the energy prices is, is very cheap. Or we can use that capacity to actually earn revenues for that customer from organizations like the National Grid, who need large energy users to actually help them manage the day-to-day uh, -day operation of the grid. Now, you mentioned DSM earlier on, and many factors, including pressure, have been around for a long time. So why is it more important now than ever before? Well, now uh, is important because I think the technological solutions are now available. So um, historically, the uh, demand side management industry has really focused on things like large scale industrial plants that can be switched on or off like a steel producer that can either choose to produce electricity or to produce steel. But that's only one small part of the overall UK PLC. Now with the advent of cloud computing, we're able to talk to much, much smaller devices and do so in a way that is secure and safe and reliable. And those small devices can now really add up to becoming a sizable resource, which is actually very, very reliable. So if, if you think of a thousand air conditioners in a building um, or, or a number of buildings, if you have just a few percentage fail, that won't actually cause you to reduce the amount of energy you've got to use or to, to manipulate. But if you look at a large industrial plant, if that has a small technical issue, you lose the whole thing. So, so really this capability of communications engineering and bringing that to the energy industry, we believe has got a lot of potential to unlock this, this uh, capability for large corporate customers. So you've talked a lot about the challenges that face corporate customers and the things that they need to be doing. Where do you fit into all of this? We fit in um, not just in, in terms of a technological solution. So as I mentioned, we've got a cloud software system that allows us to talk to controls and very safely manipulate in a temporary way a large energy user's consumption, but also from a business model innovation point of view. So typically, um, a customer would be enrolled in a program for, say, National Grid, uh, and that would offer them one revenue source. What we are saying is that because we can safely manipulate your energy consumption, we can turn your energy into um, a solution for not just the national grid, but for many other revenue sources. It could be a solution for your energy supplier to enable it to avoid costs on the wholesale market. It could be a solution for avoiding network charges at peak times, to avoiding transmission network charges at peak times. And because we can be totally flexible in how we create that energy shift uh, or change in consumption, a reduction or even an increase, we can address many revenue sources and many cost saving sources, which means that the revenue potential and the cost saving potential is much, much higher than a single um, one shot solution with, with, say, National Grid. We know things change all the time, but do you see any major changes ahead, trends that we should be looking out for? From a large corporate user perspective in the UK, um, it's the old adage that change is the only constant. Uh, we mentioned before about this new in, uh, sort of green energy being uh, incorporated in the supply mix in the UK. That is having quite significant impacts on the actual physical nature of the grid. So as more old coal-fired power stations are removed um, and greener, cleaner, solar and wind generation sources are added in, the inertia of the grid is dropping. What that means is that the grid's ability to cope with changes in supply and demand is becoming harder and harder for it to maintain. And we're seeing things that have, um, in the past, historically, uh, the grid 
would struggle in the winter when everyone came home in the dark winter's night, switch their lights on, switch their heating on, switch their cooking on, there would be a peak in demand and it would be hard for the supply to actually meet that demand. That is now changing. We're seeing it in the summer months when there's people aren't putting their lights on, aren't cooking as much with electrical or heating as much with electricity, we're seeing there isn't enough demand to cope with the solar uh, en energy that's being produced. So what, we, what that tells us is when we look forward, because change is going to be the only constant and the grid is constantly evolving as the supply and the demand mix is constantly changing, the more flexible you can be, the more resilient you can be, and the more efficient you can be, and that is the, if you like, the key watchwords for large corporations to maintain control of their energy costs and hopefully maintain their profitability. Well, when it comes to business energy consumption, you've given us a lot to think about. Mark Borrett from Reactive Tech, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you. Thank you.